Moving on to our next factoring example, we have to factor this polynomial here, 4x squared plus x cubed minus x to the power of 4 plus 2x plus 12. Now in this particular example, I'm going to introduce a bit of a shortcut that you can sometimes use to make the factoring process a little bit quicker. And the shortcut is going to be a combination in steps two and three. Now before getting into these factoring steps, you always want to make sure that the polynomial you're factoring is arranged from highest degree to lowest degree. So that's what we did here. We took the original polynomial and arranged it from highest degree to lowest degree. So the first step in the factoring process is we want to take out any common factors that we can initially. And in this particular polynomial, we weren't able to take out any uh, full constants or variables. However, we were able to take out a negative one because the leading coefficient was negative. And having a positive leading coefficient just makes the factoring process a lot more smooth. So moving on to step two, we would take this polynomial here in the bracket, which I labeled as f of x, and we would try to find factors for it using the factor theorem. And the way we do that is through trial and error. So we would plug in plus one, minus one, et cetera, et cetera, until we get values of zero. So when we plug in one for the x value, in this polynomial f of x, we get negative 18, so we know x minus one is not a factor. When we plug in negative one, we get negative 12, so x plus one is not a factor. When we plug in two, we get negative 24, so x minus two isn't a factor. However, when we plug in negative two for the x values and three for the x values, we get zero for both of those. So that means that x plus two and x minus three is a factor. And here is where the shortcut comes in that I was talking about that will combine in steps two and three. If in step two you find two factors, what that means is that if both of these individually are factors, then the product of them is also a factor. So then expanding x plus two times x minus three, we get x squared minus x minus six, and that is a factor of f of x. So now when we go into step three, when we're dividing the polynomial by a factor, we don't have to use each of these factors separately. We can combine them and divide this polynomial by this larger factor with a degree of two. So moving on to step three, we have to divide that polynomial by this factor x squared minus x minus six, which is a combination of these two factors. So I put the result here. I didn't actually show the process. I just showed the result that you get x squared plus two. So make sure that you pause the video and try this division and make sure you get the same result. You may actually want to refer back to the examples that we did in long division for when the divisor was a quadratic. Now, notice how because we combine these two factors, we saved ourselves a step of doing long division twice. We combined it in one. However, the trade-off is, is that there is a lot bigger of a chance to make a mistake. So, in step three, it's always crucial if you combine factors and divide it that the remainder that you get is always zero. You should always be getting a remainder of zero in step three anyhow. However, especially when you're combining factors, it's, uh, it's super critical to make sure that you're getting that remainder of zero just to make sure that you haven't made a mistake with the long division. So seeing so far where we have come in the factoring process, so initially in step one, what we did was we factored out this negative one. So this negative one here was step one. And then in step two, what we did is we used the factor theorem to find factors of f of x using trial and error. And we ended up getting x plus two and x minus three being factors. So these were found in step two. And then the shortcut that we did was that we combined both factors to x squared minus x minus six. And then we divided that polynomial by that factor and making sure that we get a remainder zero we know that the quotient that we ended up getting in step three was correct. 
Now, you don't have to necessarily combine these factors if you're more comfortable just doing it the longer way, just dividing the polynomials by uh, factors with degrees of one, you can also do that. You're just going to have to do it twice. I personally like to combine it and save myself a couple of steps. So now that we did that, we finished step three. We have this, um, this polynomial remaining to factor. So we go to step four and it says that if the quotient is a quadratic, then we can factor it using text techniques we already know, quadratic formula, decomposition, etc. However, in this case, x squared plus two is not factorable. You can't factor x squared plus two. There are no roots for it. You could try to put it in the quadratic formula, but the square root part will be negative. Basically, x squared plus two, if you remember, it looks like this is just a quadratic that's shifted up by two units. So the y-intercept is two. And notice how it doesn't go through the uh, x-axis. So there are no roots to it. So you can't factor it. So this is our final result. This is the final factored form for this polynomial that we had here. So again, to save yourself time, in step two, if you can find two factors, then combine them, and then in step three, you can uh, divide the remaining polynomial by the, uh, the polynomial for when you combine the factors, and it will just save you steps in the long division. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please show your support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel right here. Also follow us on Instagram at all things mathematics. And finally, if you feel like there's anything that can be improved on in the videos or you want to see a specific question or concept covered, please leave it in the comment section below. Peace out.